Hello, myself, Anupam Saikya, on behalf of Bodhiscape Zone. We are starting a conversation between Hector from New York and Dagmar. She will moderate the conversation. It's all about performance art, I think. So, performance <laughs> art in general and personal practice of the Hector, how he perceive, how he observe the performance art in general. Yes, thank you. Um, good morning, Hector. Um, it's morning. great we can have this conversation. Um, we, um, Anupam's um, aim in these interviews is to find a bridge between the personal experience and the kind of general idea of performance art practice in these days. Uh, but I feel that it's not so interesting to right away go into the general sense of it because then it becomes uh, very much an assumption. So I based my questions basically on your personal idea process and then we can bridge it to a general sense. Yeah, so you understand the starting point instead of you know, tossing and turning any opinions. I'm not interested and nobody is. <laughs> so it's much more concrete if we refer to personal experiences. That's why um, I addressed it in the headline. And the first question would be, uh, or, or is, in your thoughts, does presence relate to a life situation? Uh, supported or accompanied by the public viewer. So the life situation means the presence of the public viewer or an audience participation. Is this a necessary premise? Now thinking towards your own work in the past and in the future maybe, um, how does that relate? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you, Anupan, for inviting me to be part of this um, this project of these interviews, and thank you, Dagmar, for uh, moderating. Um, it is something in terms of the, that first question about presence, um, particularly in performance art, live art. It's been something that has been in my mind since uh, the whole thing started, which is back in March. I remember clearly when I went into reclusion. It was Friday, March 13th. It was um, a day when I had just um, finished working with kids in the Bronx. Um, and we got news that um, starting Monday, uh, there would be no schools, no universities, that the, you know, that the city was entering into a process of reclusion, not mandatory, but uh, voluntary, which I don't know if it made it worse or better, but that's something else, that's another issue. Um, so I remember that particular day, and from March 13th to the present, um, I've been out a few times, basically, a few mm -hmm. times out of my apartment. I came ill with, um, with uh, COVID um, around the end of May, March, and it extended to April for about three weeks. Wow. Um, so I went and I experienced that, um, what it is to be affected by some foreign unknown agent, such as CV-19. Um, it is, in my case, it felt like the flu, 10 times like the flu with body aches, with um, a little bit of stomach ache. But what most affected me was um, 
the joints, the mm -hmm. joints. And um, I had never experienced that before. It was as if this electric currents were shut to my joints. And it made me think about my body because my body is my instrument of work. Mm -hmm. And that made me very desperate and anxious and worried about the future. Uh, my future as a performance artist where my body once again is the instrument of creation, right? So as I lay in bed for, for the first couple of weeks, basically, that kept in my mind. Um, and with that, I did also as much as I could a lot of thinking about this idea of presence. Um, how we in this particular discipline treat our presence in relation to the others, in relation to the people who are around us, in relation to that physicality, in relation to the space and the energy we create at that moment when we are sharing an experience. Because it is a magic moment, a magic moment where the art this, the body of the artist is generating so much energy, so much power, and in, in a way that is the sharing energy. It's not, you know, um, it's not mm -hmm. controlled, it's not checked, it's just there. Mm -hmm. So I started to think about that and started to reflect on it and, and write, uh, in fact, about this idea of what comes next for performance art. Um, and yet, but yes, there are modalities for performance art. I don't want to negate that part. We have video performance, right? We have photo performance. Um, and now we have the Zoom performances. It's sort of like this other modality of, of live art that we have come to use in the past few months. But still, there is something missing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the magic, the magic of being able to, to see your audience, to see that you are in front of other bodies, right? That um, you're sharing a particular space, a particular moment. So I wrote a lot about the body, time, and space our bodies as performance artists in a particular setting, in a particular geography, and in a particular time. Mm. And for a while, I kind of rejected the notion of the Zoom experience, the doing performance for where I was not present. Um, but also I started to thinking after a little bit, after I got better also, um, that it is a reinvention mm -hmm. of the discipline perhaps, where we can project even more strongly through the waves, through the, through the distance, our presence. Mm -hmm. So there are these two things right now that I'm thinking is presence at the moment in real time and presence in belated time or, or delayed time. Mm -hmm. um, that is instant, but not so, not so instant. We think that Zoom is an instant thing, but it's not, mm -hmm. right? There is a delay and there's that, that's the time rapture where there mm -hmm. are these seconds milliseconds where we are not because we are just getting there the image is getting there to the other place mm -hmm. um and that for me right now is um it's what's um been you know in my head and 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 thinking about that and also this type of being somewhere else in mind perhaps not in the physical body but in mind with others so are we as humans, and here's the question, right? Are we as humans capable of creating that new mode of communication, which is not this 
right? But more of a, 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 a another level, I think, at another level. And I think it could be possible. It could be possible because I think we are experimenting already that, right? By some of the projects that we are doing, collaborations that we are doing. So my very first reaction to opposing this idea of I'm not going to do the Zoom thing. Mm. I'm going to only wait until things, you know, I don't know, go back to, 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 to the physical space. Um, shift, it has shifted. Mm. Um, and it's been shifting. Looking for new modalities of expression. Yeah. yeah because we don't know. I don't, I don't know if this will be the new normal way to do our work. I hope not. <laughs> but um, the, clearly what I experienced also was, if you think about the magic that you were uh, mentioning, okay, I don't want to now define that, what that is, but I feel the absence of that magic um, or the underestimation of that magic uh, could quickly occur in the Zoom actions, um, maybe by others or, you know, where um, there is less of an excitement, less of an investment of preparation, of assuming so many aspects when you, when you do go live, when you do have the kind of um, nakedness, um, you know, naked bodiness in sight of the participants um, that are live there. And um, I feel that um, in changing that modality, like you were saying to explore that, I feel if we can maintain the magic, no matter what, yeah, and uh, kind of pierce through that flat screen, and feel, bring back that magic to ourselves. I think there is a possibility there. Mm. That's not the question, it was a comment to it. <laughs> yes, and you're, you're absolutely right. I think we are breaking that um, dimensionality. We're mm. breaking the screen, and I think the challenge is that, yes. right? We break that third, that third level. It's yeah. like, pushing it because the, the three levels we know already, you know, with height and depth. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we go and break into that yeah. additional dimension? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Um, because of this, the absence now uh, and the participatory role, which, you know, in your work is often essential, you know, the giving or the interactivity um have you observed that your idea process has slightly shifted or changed have you found that the idea process or the origin of your ideas have shifted as well already um i i started to shift a little bit that um participatory aspect of my work that at the beginning I explore, at the beginning of my involvement with performance art, I was doing a lot. Um, and my most recent works um, started to, to push that. And, and I think I was going to the fact or this aspect of do I need to physically approach audience? Do I need to physically give them something or ask for something? Or can I do it at another level? Mm -hmm. at, a, at, a, at a level that is more here and here, you know? And I say, say, when I say here with, with this sense of the inner self, the heart, rather than coming close. Mm -hmm. So now, um, that doesn't worry as much, the sense of the physical contact to participate or to have them involved. Because I was already exploring this idea of another level of involvement. 
mm. where I can connect just by looking, just by paying attention to someone or the people around, how do you react with that without giving you a flower, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. How would you react to that? One of the things, however, in, in this uh, that we're talking about now is, and we were talking about breaking that dimension, one thing that we will lack is the sensorial aspect mm -hmm. because we're only tagging to the visual and, uh, and the hearing. Um, and of course, the tactile, but what about smells, mm -hmm. right? That are so important many times uh, in our work when consciously or unconsciously we are creating an atmosphere of smells either our own bodies or the objects that we use or the materials that we bring you know consciously or not purposely or not into the into the space mm. to which people react right um yeah i think i think the senses are um the sensorial aspect is limited mm. in this performances uh, teleperformances mm. yeah in the teleperformance what about the space in itself i mean the, the space is quite different you know we are not we choose differently the space or you choose differently the space yes the space the space uh, yeah um how many times can we do the same i mean wh how many times can we use the same space right at home or where we are secluded, the same spot because it has a white wall because there's not much in you know in there. Um, I think the magic also um, was because of particular settings. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that how we use those spaces, how mm. we made it a part of our experience, being in there but also how to trigger that experience for others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I, I think the, time, the body, the space and time, um, we are, we're shifting all of those parameters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the, there is, or is there a possibility to navigate now and to alter the space, to surprise yourself with the space? I have, I'm asking that specifically because I've done that and I felt myself, you know, myself feeling though in front of the flat screen and, you know, the reflection is the flatness and not mm. three dimensional. My own magic or my own physical experience in the space had a huge impact on what would happen or what could happen. Mm -hmm. So, do, do you mean your your own physical space? Yeah. Or the space of the screen? Uh, no, the, my own physical space. Ah. Like the, regarding that it's flat, but you know, coming to the self, inner self, yes. and to that magical relation. Yes. Again. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, I, I think I think it is an exploration of of that. It's how do we explore this, right? The mm -hmm. frame uh, that we are in. But I think it also has to do with how much space, how much room do you have in your own physical environment at the moment, right? Uh, perhaps there you have a bigger house, bigger apartment, where you didn't consider a corner, um, where you didn't consider a wall. Then for you becomes such an experience to do that. But if you are in a smaller place, I believe you only have so many uh, possibilities mm -hmm. of exploring that space because at the end, you'd know every corner of it. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no more this idea of finding where else can I put this? You know, where else can I explore? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but you were talking about earlier about the reinvention and maybe the reinvention is to not take for granted that this corner or you know that particular aspect of the small or large space whatever the space is yeah. can be 
reinvestigated. Absolutely. Yes. That's, yeah. Yes. Yes. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. I think it can. Um, it is actually right. With every new performance that we do for the screen, even if it's the same corner, there is a different experience. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's. Um, um, that was my third question also um, is that in the way that I perceived your work in the past um, you have a very acute eye for um, let me say the aesthetic um, of a space you know that is given to you the way that you compose extend uh, those parameters or you know, adjust it to your idea process. Um, so could you maybe describe these possibilities now into the realm that you are reinventing? Mm -hmm. Possibly, apart from saying, okay, this is my white wall and this mm -hmm. is, you know, what I'm doing. Yes. <laughs> the white wall, which is, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like you said, Dagmar, I, I'm very careful about the aesthetics um, of my work. Um, what I wear, the colors, the materials, the textures, the smells, which I, I can't do that right now. Um, so it's very tactile. Uh, the sounds, that you, you've been to my performances, the sounds, all of that. And when I think about the, aesthetic of, the aesthetics of sites specific, mm. the sites that I've been before also inform my yes. work. And now I am informing the space with my works. So it's, it's kind of reversed. Mm -hmm. I am putting more effort, more attention to how I move, how I interact with materials, or how I just propel my body into transforming the space. Because I know that the space might be the same, this you know, white wall that I know it, uh, Etc. So there is more attention to how, for that particular performance, I am going to possibly, I hope, transform that wall, transform the corner of my um, the desk where I am, or mm -hmm. the sofa where I, you know, where I where I do the work. I, still, however, thinking of this construction and it's interesting because and i was talking with, um i did an interview a few weeks ago for argentinian um publication i come from film um so this idea of <laughs> the frame so i've always framed myself you know in this in this idea of even if i'm you know the whole body in a long shot a medium shot and close up so i've been always thinking about that and, and, and now it kind of, it does come a little bit natural because we have the frame yeah. and I have that frame there. Um, so to accommodate things that are behind me or not, um, they're also uh, considered carefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yes. you, you were saying earlier that there is a possibility maybe in this experiment to break that frame or to challenge that frame, isn't it? Yes. Even if yeah. it comes now natural to you. Yes. There yes. may be a way to penetrate or to bridge. Yes. Or not. I don't know. <clears throat> maybe mm. it maybe the frame is the frame is the frame is the frame and, and that's it. And we don't, you know, there's nothing yeah. else. What I meant was the we have the frame. For now I'm thinking about the frame. I'm thinking the screen mm. when I said break. 
break that three-dimensionality. Um, something like Brecht did in theater, where he proposed the idea of breaking this dimension, the division between the, the audience and, and the actor, right? When mm -hmm. the actor is no longer actor, but it's also audience. So mm -hmm. that's what I meant when breaking. Mm -hmm. When we have this screen in front of us, it's breaking that. So it's breaking forward. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting that you're making me think now, how can I break perhaps this or that? right the frame becomes that yeah um and maybe for that also is the use of a little bit more more sophisticated equipment and when i said equipment it's not just the camera that is right available to us in front of you know from from the computer or or mobile device mm -hmm. but where there are cameras you know, that react to our own movement. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been thinking about that, um, the cameras that are sensor, you know, yeah. that respond to, to yeah. with sensor devices to movement. So in that sense, you are doing your thing, I, I think, um, as the, the artist that the performing, but at the same time, the camera is shifting. Mm -hmm. So it's collaborating with mm -hmm. you. Um, in breaking this, you know, uh, th this frame, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, what What are the parameters of your object space relation, um, considering your body movement? And you know, in some part we have tackled that already, pertaining to uh, this situation, but if we leave this situation and you could maybe you know, relate to this question in general, then that would help in the understanding of performance art in general. Object space relation in relation to my body movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes. Um. What, you know, what are the parameters or where would you see um, extensions where would you see the challenge of uh, circumference, maybe? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Unexpectedness. Yes, <laughs> when thinking about, um, when thinking about objects, when thinking about um, my own body and it's, capabilities and uh, um, also limitations. I'm very careful in studying those materials and those objects. And I believe that in performance art, one has to be knowledgeable of that, that you have to know your materials, you have to know um, and, and be responsible in terms, uh, be responsible with that. Um, you cannot play with knives not knowing that those knives will cut you if you don't handle them the right way or the way you want them to handle in relation to your body. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think, uh, very challenging for many, um, for many artists to even think about that. They think that, oh yeah, I'll use this, I'll use that, and, and I'll put it together. But there could be, you know, consequences to that. So in my case, um, I relate to an object or objects. I study them. I see what, I kind of test what I can or cannot do uh, with those in a particular setting, in a particular site, because it will also afflict um, or have an impact of it, right? For example, if I have this huge board that I'm going to be walking around in the space and it's very harsh and it has nails um, and it's an old board that let's say I found uh, somewhere in a, in a city that it called my attention because of its texture and what it may represent. I take it, I study it, and if I have a small space, I know 
I have to know the limitations of, of working with the board over my head. Mm -hmm. I have to know where, how to hold it because, um, and how to put it on. Because if I don't, I could hurt myself. Um, so it is important, and uh, I believe, uh, to know that aspects of, of, of your materials, of your objects. Yeah. I have, and that comes, of course, with experience because I've been in situations where I was not careful enough to, to consider the, a possible danger with the object that I was working with. And the performance was affected, but I was also challenged to, at the moment, overcome that um, the problem that, were, that I was having with an object. Um, um, so based on that, I decided, no, no, no. Next time, I really have to know what, how I'm going to interact with the, with the object, what, what is the weight, the texture, what I can do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because after all, you are ex you're, you are interacting with another physical body. It's matter, and that matter is going to react to you, right? Um, this experience is, relates to. I was in this performance. It was commissioned by this organization here in New York City, and I was supposed to break uh, a jar. Um, and I know how much pressure I can put with my body. And I requested for a particular um, for a particular jar. Well, I don't know what happened. I didn't have time to carefully think about it. And the the day of the performance, I lifted it. I said, "It's wait. It's just it looks a little bit heavy." What happened was that I couldn't break it. <laughs> I couldn't break it. I couldn't. And and my movements are very slow. So thinking about movement, right? I don't go and crush things. I don't. I don't like that. I like to do something that's very, very mm. slow. So this slow, I couldn't break the damn jar. <laughs> you know? I was there for a lot. Uh, and of course I did break it, but it took longer. Mm. And when I did that, I hurt myself because I cut and the things went in there, you know? Um, <laughs> but that's an example, mm. which I think in performance art is, it's also part of performance art, right? It's also part of our work mm. to discover th th these uh, things um, in that case. But if you're dealing with more dangerous stuff, like, you know, nails, um, uh, if I'm going to put nails in my mouth that later on I'm going to spit, I'm going to test it. I'm not just going to go to the to wherever I'm performing and just put you know a bunch of nails in my mouth and then try to do it mm. if I haven't tested if I haven't you know practiced a little bit. Yeah. Um, and many people think that performance art is improvisation. It is not improvisation. Mm. Like any art, you know, it's not improvisation, and that's why the difference is performance art because in its art sense, it has to have we have to have control of those materials, those elements, to create this um, aesthetic presentation of our work. And I always say in a particular content, with content, of course, and in a particular context. Um, so, yeah, it, it is very important. And now that we are um, maybe doing this more controlled at home things, it's also important. It's also important to see hey, um, what am I going to put on my face, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, I know my environment, yes, physically I know it. Um, so what objects can I use um, that I haven't done before? Uh, but I'm, I'm also, and I've been trying to push this idea of, is it about the object or is it about my body? Mm. Uh, um, because I've been seeing a lot of work that relates to construction of what I call more installation, live installation mm -hmm. work, when, when you build something, mm -hmm. right? Um, but really, you're just putting things together. It's not where your body is actually doing all this effort to become part of it. 
Um, so it's more of a live installation work than performance art work, I believe. Mm. Yeah, both have performative, performative natures. Um, um, and, but there is a variance. For example, uh, some of the work that I, see, I, I have seen, your work, Dagmar, there is the performance art, although you're constructing all these environments carefully and some of them you know, need, require attention to detail. So you're immersed in that and it's, it's your body that is in there, carefully putting the teacups or carefully moving this, the straws or you know, these elements. So it's not installation. You're building something, but your body is mm-hmm. there, so, so present rather than just putting you know a bunch of tires that i've seen people do or placing them around and then like oh it's done it's, I'm, I'm i'm exiting now yeah yeah i understand i yeah. i was going to argue with that because um i'm an installation maker or performer or whatever and for me the this build up and um also considering the object relation in careful knowing. Uh, But I wanted to say one more thing about, I mean, we can go further and further into this control aspect, yeah, which I don't want to, but I want to just come back slightly to the magical moment. And I believe that the magical moment slips the control. It, It invites you for a surprise that you have not anticipated or not integrated uh, into your planning. So we can, in the planning, allow for the moment of unknowing. Yeah. Yes. And I think, I think you, you do understand exactly what I mean. Yeah. And it doesn't deny all the things that you were saying, but it gives space, it gives room for that moment that cannot, it's unpredictable. Right. Absolutely. Yes, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. With that. And I, I think there's a difference between that element of surprise um, that we get and that we give. And that is very different with this notion that uh, I would say general populations, general audiences have about the improvisation aspect of performance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do have to at times improvise to respond to that, that magical moment. But that doesn't mean that the work of, of performance artists is improvisation, which a lot of people think, yeah. right? Oh, but you're a performance artist. You can do this. You can improvise. Oh, there is a buck of, bucket of water there. Why don't you just use that? It's like, no, <laughs> right? That's what I meant with yeah. improvisation. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, the last question, is um, pertaining maybe a little bit uh, to what you were saying right at the beginning where you said really you were opposed to that Mm. flat image, to the Zoom, to the means that we are discovering as availability now. But um, do you have emotionally, any fears or any hesitations towards what will become? Because I mean, you also are an international artist, you are traveling. So the whole traveling aspect and, you know, to arrive at a place and to share understanding about performance art, you know, your own physical movement before and after at the moment is nowhere. You know, it is cheaper also. (laughs) Um, The investment is of another kind. Um, And I was wondering if you have any fears that it will be uh, influencing our processes in the future. Yes, I, I am concerned about the possible inability not to be together with other performance artists in different places. Mm. It is not just about 
traveling, doing your work and living, you know, and saying goodbye. It's about these human connections that we create in many different parts of the world where we experience cultures, where we, um, we nurture ourselves uh, with knowledge that perhaps we don't have in, in our you know, home environments or home places, um, where we also give a little bit of what we know. So this sharing, this, this network, uh, uh, creating community, and I'm talking about world communities, um, will be impacted. Mm. And that is my worry. That is my worry that I, we, I will not be able to, to go to a place and live there and experience it and 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 make it part of of of, of my own self mm -hmm. uh informing my uh, who i am but also of not being able to give mm -hmm. um i had projects i was supposed to be in in morocco this summer working with um uh, with community-based organizations working with youth um, and I say working because it's a two-way thing, learning from them as I learn from, as they learn from me. Mm -hmm. um, this exchange, mm -hmm. this beautiful exchange of, of, of knowledge, of experiences, of flavors, tastes, and at the same time, you know, of, of bringing them a little bit of what I know, um, it's been interrupted cut like this mm -hmm. just like that's it you can't and there's no way you we can right now take a plane you know and i'm gonna go there and then here 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 um that 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 is um something that is going is going to impact yes the way we forge community the way we forge relations to people yes we can um we can network like this, you know, uh, this telepresence, but it would be so different right now if we were in India or in Germany or here, you know, um, having coffee and just being present. Yeah. Um, yes, so it is something to worry about. Um, and I don't think it's, it's, it's just like a lot of, a lot of um, art administrators, a lot of museums, galleries are thinking, well, we'll just shift everything to, to Zoom experience. We will just shift everything to virtual experience. It's not that. Yeah. It's not that. You cannot, you cannot really, you know, um, disregard our own nature as human beings, which is this physicality. Yes. We need that. We need the energy of others. Yeah. And those others need as well to, to feed from, from this contact right so there has been a lot of talks and uh, discussions online etc and and here there has there has been explosion of of zoom zoom here zoom there zoom 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 <laughs> are we really thinking no it is wonderful because of zoom we can do this for example right it is wonderful but we should also be thinking what is next what is after this very present reality um and also take that as an experience mm -hmm. okay a lot of people think uh today i can't wait to get back to normal mm -hmm. it's like wait hold on <laughs> you will not get back to normal it's not no it's not gonna happen we are not going back to normal people please understand that mm -hmm. we will go back to new normal you know, nor normalcy, um, but not hopefully not to what we were before. Yeah. And if humanity goes back to what we were before, then we haven't learned. Then mm. we haven't learned anything. No. We haven't learned from this experience. We haven't learned from this tragic moment in our history. 
because then we will just be saying, you know, scrap all the hundreds and thousands of people that have died. Yeah. We'll just move forward to, you know, to what we were before. And that's that this is, and I see this, you know, happening in the world right now. Here, as I said, uh, yesterday, we, New York started to open things and people think that, oh yeah, everything is back to normal. I was talking to people in Spain, the same, you know, oh yeah, we're going back to normal. Um, but it's not so, not so. I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think we, uh, we should think that way. Uh, and, and we should look for these possible alternatives of giving ourselves as artists and also giving our, you know, this uh, moment of reflection, mm. what we will do. Yeah. And it has definitely, uh, for me also, it has definitely with what you were saying now, heightened uh, the value of um, communication of quote unquote real communication, you know, of present or presence communication. I'm not putting a dependency lock on it, but I'm deepening the sense of you and I or you and us being together yes. and what that entails, you know. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it is powerful, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm so glad that we have the the technology to do it mm. right at this point in time i wonder what it could have been without this technology mm. all of us secluded in our own square spaces um I, I i don't know i don't i i you know yes people have gone through that through history yes all these pandemics all these plagues um uh, but I couldn't imagine myself being completely isolated and the technology made it a little bit easier to bear, mm. you know, what is happening right now. Yeah. And I think it was a way of connecting, like you said, Dagmar, connecting with others, even if it's remotely. Mm. At least I can see you, I can see my family, I can see other friends, we can do things yeah, together, yeah. right? That, that, is, that was wonderful, impossible through this. Mm. But as you said, it's not a replacement for human interaction. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and I think institutions, galleries, museums have to think about that, you know, create this platforms for broader um, communication, but at the same time, um, encourage this local communication yeah. of peoples. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I don't know. I think that's the big challenge now yeah. for, for our institutions, yeah. you know, to move forward. Yeah. And also to have us present, right? Exactly, that's what I want to hear. Yes, <laughs> to have us in there. Bring back. Right? Yeah. Bring us back into the museum, bring us back into the gallery, right? And what are our conditions also to do that? Yeah. Since a lot of funding, mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago, I had this um, conference panel about performance art community in New York City. We haven't received any assistance funding mm. to live or to to take care of health issues to take care of you know daily expenses mm. there were funds for other disciplines yeah there was fund for painting for music for theater dance but there was not a category specific for let's say performance art mm. um so the the, the 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 conference that i organized was particularly for for artists performance art artists in New York City from the five different boroughs uh, and we talked about that and how much we need and mm -hmm. one of the panelists said well you can just say you're a visual artist but <laughs> I don't paint I don't draw I don't you know do anything my 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 medium is performance art yeah. and I don't want to you know what would I lie to others that would be lying to myself you know that I'm 
and, and, and they, they, they also ask for, of course, proof of, what, of your work. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a visual artist, then how can I prove that I'm a visual artist and, and, and then get the support? Mm -hmm. So particularly to performance artists, will, will they invite us back to the museums and galleries mm -hmm. in the sense if we stay with the Zoom? Mm -hmm. Or what is the alternative, or how, and how do we negotiate that mm. presence, right? How do we negotiate our, our also residency mm. programs, the festivals where we had to travel? At least with that, before we could ask for some type of help from our own ministries or, you know, to get support, funding. Hey, I'm going there, I'm going. Uh, but now what do we do? They will say, well, you're not going anywhere. Why don't you just turn on your camera, do your performance, and you're fine, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fighting so, that lobby. Mm, exactly. Exactly. It's like, how do we also, are we going to be able to kind of shift or propose these things yeah, yeah. Mm, for, for the future? Mm. Good point, really good point, because that's um, allowing us to look one step ahead. We can only go by minute to minute, step by step. Yes. <laughs> but it's very good <laughs> yes. to bring this uh, to attention, you know. Yes, it's to bring that um, kind of looking into the present, but forwarding into the future and saying well this future is needs needs this and this because we've been through so much yeah. already you know yeah thank you thank you that mar <laughs> input thank you thank you thank you yes. anupan how are you <laughs> it's, it's really amazing because i learn a lot actually it's really admirable. Thank you, Dagmar. Thank you, Hector. It's very learning things today, actually. This is, I feel now that having Bodyscape with you two is now become one step ahead regarding in relation to the performance art. It's really great. And I was thinking, you know, from my experience, uh, the word came that improvisation. I have seen this in the South Asian context. The artists are using the word improvisation. And, uh, and the outside of the South Asian context, there are some uh, people who deny the improvisation. We think we have discussed this again and again. And when we talk with the Dagmar, this word came as well. Then Dagmar said, it is a evolving, not improvisation. I remember. <laughs> yes, this is, this is one thing we need to discuss maybe in next, uh, next episode or in the next platform or in a physical platform, you know. This is very interesting point. I have seen the word frequently used or maybe in the South Asian context, the, the social life is very much ritual, theatrical, you know, real physical life, social life. It may be come mm -hmm. from there. And the another point is that the came the idea of installation. It's really great that how Hector putting the idea of installation, you know, that's really interesting. Yeah, these two things I really wants to share with you people. It's really great. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you so thank you. Much. Yes, thank you. I think those, um, those two aspects, you know, need further uh, investigation, reflection. I don't think there is one uh, person that has answers to this uh, dynamic discipline as performance yeah. art. And that's what makes it so yeah. rich. That's what makes it so powerful yeah. that not one person has a definite answer mm -hmm. for this, you know? Although there are, like any dis discipline, and I call it discipline, I just don't call it practice, you know? It's not just one art practice or art 
ex um, expression form. It's really a discipline if we think about it, but any discipline, and this one is so rich that it has its flexibility and its amplitude, right? To accept and kind of reflect on its own and its artists coming from other disciplines that make it possible because they're bringing their own experience. Mm -hmm. uh, they're bringing their own knowledge. So we have performance artists that come from dance, performance artists that come from installation, performance artists that come from video, cinema, etc. And that's what makes it so powerful and so rich. Yeah. And those two things that you noted, Anopar, um, deserve, I think, it, attention. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Dagmar, for the moderating on <laughs> Bodyscape.